Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart, and in this video, we have a painting tutorial for the new Terminators from the Leviathan starter set for 40k 10th edition. Now, during my teens, Warhammer Fantasy Battle was very much the key driver in my wargaming, but I did quite a lot of 40k gaming as well, starting with Rogue Trader, then on to Second Edition. But after that, I've not really played the game much. I have followed the lore to a certain extent, and then was heavily involved in Horus Heresy gaming a few years ago, and I've probably migrated more to that style rather than the, the modern 40k as it is at the moment. I've dabbled a little bit here and there. I think around 4th edition I bought an army and painted it and played two games with it but then, then sold it again and then a few years ago I bought a few little bits of 8th edition to try and start that and maybe get my son interested. Again that sort of fell through um, and I've kind of come to terms with the fact that I'm, I can enjoy 40k by looking at the models and painting it and I do a lot of the work but not really playing it very often. But as always, with a new edition, new models come along, and I was very, very much taken with the new Indominus Pattern Terminator armor. Now, I think it's um, Indominus Pattern that's kind of resized to go with the new Primaris, so maybe this is a Primaris version. I am not up with the more recent lore, especially now the lore moves along. I know much more about 30k Horus Heresy lore than I do about the current 40k lore, so if you know what these, this armor is supposed to represent, is it just a redo of the Indominus pattern or is it a Primaris version? Let me know in the comments because I genuinely am interested. Anyway, I decided I wanted to grab some of these new miniatures to paint. They just look fantastic. And my original plan was to maybe go Deathwing, go back to my, my days of playing the, the first edition of Space Hulk, or maybe even to paint Blood Angels in the style of those original Metal Terminator box set. The box art for that was very, very cool. Blood Angels with all the, the sort of checker patterns and the, and the hazard stripes on the fists and things. But I've always been a bit of an Imperial Fists fan, and I've recently painted quite a large Horus Heresy Imperial Fist commission, and I came up with a paint scheme for it that I was really, really enjoying, and I was just too tempted to use it, or a, a version of it. It's very, very similar. It's cleaned up a little bit for, for 40k. So I thought to myself, you know what, I don't have any 40k painting tutorials on the channel, lots of historical stuff, growing range of fantasy things, and I'd like the channel to reflect my own hobby and my work and my, my enjoyment of, of all the gaming and miniatures that I do a little bit more. So I'm planning on increasing the number and range of tutorials and coverage on the channel. So I thought it was time for the first tutorial for something 40k based. Now I've grabbed a few of these Terminators. Um, this tutorial is going to become a very, very small painting project where there will be a playable thousand point force, all Terminators, so there's only going to be about 23 models in total and that includes two characters and a Dreadnought. But this is my test piece, so to speak, that has become a painting tutorial. So follow along and let me know what you think at the end and I'll see you on the other side. Now, after a black prime, the first thing I'm going to do is give the model a Zenithal highlight of leather brown. Now, this is a primer, but I find it goes through the airbrush fantastically, and that's why I'm, I'm using it here, and it provides the right tone. Now, I'm being very gentle and careful to start with, aiming very much top down, though I do layering a little bit from the sides by angling the miniature. But what I'm trying to do here is leave a fair amount of black for that natural shadow and I'm going to be layering on top of this afterwards with a white as well and I'm trying to build a really really nice base for me to use some yellow through the airbrush afterwards and get this beautiful mixed tone which you'll see in a few moments. Now for that white I'm using Model Air, it goes through the airbrush very very nicely, Game Air is pretty good as well, there's lots of whites out there and a white ink would be another option here. You want a nice thin layer and what I'm doing here is 
picking out where the light might land. I'm being a bit abstract with it at times. I like it to look slightly modulated. So I'm going for the top of the, the shoulder pad here. I went for the sort of lower end of the fist. I really want to see some gradient within the panels when I add the yellow afterwards. And when it comes to the legs and things, I'm doing sort of aiming at the fronts a little bit more, allowing that natural shadow in between the legs to form and remain there. Now here I go a little off piste and most people wouldn't follow this in this order. It's just something I like to do. So you may well decide to skip this stage and paint these in afterwards. But as I got this lovely zenithal highlight on that already, I want to make use of that. So I'm just painting in these purity seals. So I'm using Blood Angels Contrast Red for the actual wax area. And in a moment, I'm going to follow up with some skeleton horde contrast paint on the actual parchments themselves. And it's the parchments that you get most of the benefit from doing this over the nice sort of zenithal that we've already created on the miniature. Now, how am I going to protect it when I cover the miniature in yellow afterwards? So I'm going to use a little bit of liquid mask and peel it off. Now, you could just completely ignore these stages and re-white these stages afterwards and paint them in. Do what you prefer, but I wanted to explain why I was being a little bit strange here, um, but it's partly because it's my own miniature. For reference, the liquid mask I'm using is a Vallejo brand. Now we go on to the core of the miniature's colour, and I'm using Contrast Nasdrag Yellow. It's thinned two parts of Contrast, one part water, and I'm being very, very gentle through the airbrush here. And this is where the underpainting comes in. This is where those zenithals of brown and white really, really give you the, the under colour and the textures that you need. Now, the main trick here is to build up slowly. Where the colour is at its lightest, where it's whitest there, very, very thin layers will give you this beautiful, bright, thin yellow. And where it's most shaded, whereas the shadows in the miniature are, you will get a natural shadow as it is. But I'm also applying more layers to those areas to really build it up. And it's kind of a trial and error here and going around adding a little bit more to darkening it and really kind of controlling where you put it. But because the paint is so thin, unless you really, really push your finger down hard on the airbrush, you've got a little bit of room for mistakes here if you go light because you can go back for that second coat. And you should be able to see here just how light I'm going on to start with, especially where the miniature is at its lightest. I don't want to zoom in there and press too hard and obliterate all the work that I've done with the underpainting. But I think that it just gives us beautiful rich warm yellow which is very kind of orangey and ochre into the the shadow areas but because of the brightest areas of the underpainting of that zenithal pre-highlight it just gives you these beautiful transitions which are a lot easier to do than they would be with a hairy brush or if you were doing it just using standard paints with an airbrush and building up to lighter tones now it's time to start filling in all the other parts. So this is Contrast Black Legion. I tend to default to this now rather than using standard black paints in most cases. It's opaque enough that it covers very, very well, um, but it just gives you a lot more control. It's very, very easy to handle. And I'm just using it to paint in all of those kind of um, flexible areas of the armor. So the backs of the knees, the, the joints and things that it looks like they've got some kind of rubber banding or something like that. And this paint just really really covers that for you at the same time I just re-black in the gun and I'm going to pick out the, that cabling which goes from the the back of the shoulder pad just underneath the marine's elbow as well now I made the decision to go for a black Aquila here I know in 40k that Imperial Fists quite often have this red I didn't want to add too many more colors to the mix i wanted that kind of desaturated but warm yellow and black mostly so the only other color you've got in there will be the eyes and the red of the purity seals
Now this color is a new find for me. This is model color white gray and its coverage is really, really good. Even thin slightly. It's very, very, very smooth and a very good substitute for something like Corax white, which has its uh, issues, shall we say. So I'm using this to paint over the uh, Crux Terminatus on the shoulder. I will cover the one on the knee as well. And while I've got the paint out, I use it to paint in the eye slots and I give a little dot on the light on the or the targeter on the top of the marine shoulder. And once that white is dry, you can go in and add those eyes straight away. So this is contrast warp lightning straight out of the pot and very gently glazed over those white areas. You allow the contrast to pull in the crevices and the lighter area at the front or at the top of it rather automatically gives you this lovely glowing effect. Easy peasy. Now this is a technical paint, it's Spirit Stone Red. I don't know if they still do this or not. I've had this stuff for years. Um, absolutely perfect to do on little buttons and targeters and things like that. Just pop that over the little white underpaint and you get a little natural highlight on there and it dries as a shiny finish. If you haven't got it or they don't make it anymore, little contrast red and a little bit of gloss varnish will do. Now to give those white areas a little bit more depth, I'm going to be using Express Color and I'm going to be using Templar White. This is their version of Apothecary White and I'm thinning it with the medium. I think it's one part medium to two parts Templar White. And again, almost use it a little bit like a shade here. This is what these, these white contrast paints do. They work fantastically over something that's already painted white. So there you go. You've almost got like a, the gray lining on there and it's absolutely fantastic when you go back and tidy it up with a little bit of white paint afterwards. Now for some model colour and I'm using some German grey. This is a nice dull black grey and it's perfect for highlighting black areas. So then the gentlest of dry brushes on the Aquila on the front there and I'll also use it on the Storm Bolter as well. And now my favourite metallic paint, or one of them, it's Black Metal from Scale Colour or Scale 75. And I'm just dry brushing it on some of the areas of the Storm Bolter, so the barrels at the front. I will do the rear of the gun as well. I want to leave some of it black. And I'll also, using a hairy brush in a moment, just pick out the visible shell casings at the side, just to give a little bit of a mixture of colours and tones. Now for some Vallejo Game Air Silver, and it's a perfect accompaniment to the black metal. And again, just a little bit of dry brushing just to pick out those highlights at the top. Don't over cover what you've already done. I've not used any washes there at all yet, and you can already see that it just works really, really well with the existing metallics to make it pop. Just pick out the little skull on the Aquila as well. Now what you'll also notice me doing here is using it to pick out some edges. I think metal tends to wear on its edges. I quite like it to, to look a little bit worn, a little bit weathered. This isn't an heavy metal style paint job. This isn't going to be super clean, though I try to leave some of the brightness in there with the yellow. But I'm just going around and very, very gently trying to catch some edges. So it does a couple of things here, it makes it look worn and weathered, but it also takes away from that need to do edge highlighting quite as much which let's face it not all of us enjoy doing especially on standard army models and this is this is a trooper for an army this is a tabletop standard a good tabletop standard i'm aiming for but it is very much a table or top standard this isn't a character or a display piece now the trick here is to try and be fairly careful. You don't want to get too much on the flat surfaces. That really will mess your paint job up. So make sure you're using the right side brush. I'm being lazy and dry brushing it on. You could edge it on if you wanted, but the, half of the point of this is what I've already said is about making it look like it's well worn and, and wearing off the paint, but then also to add a few little highlights in place of where you may traditionally want to do some edge highlighting with a hairy brush. 
Now the next stage here is airbrushing on some gloss varnish because I'm going to use some oils and I'm going to apply a decal. If you didn't want to apply oils and you wanted to finish the miniature here, we absolutely could. It's pretty much done and table ready. You could just apply a little bit of gloss varnish if you so wish to the area you want to apply a decal. I think that's the best way of doing it. Or you can just apply it straight if you want to as well. But I'm gonna carry on here and show you what I'm gonna do to finish it off. If you're not one for oil washes or using enamel pin washes and things like that, then you could carry on and base it and be done with it. So applying the decals now using Microset and Microsol, I will pop a link, as I say so often in here now, for a short tutorial I did on how I applied decals. Again, you don't have to follow it, but if you really want it to, to be durable and look like it's properly blended into the metal rather than a sticker on the top, I think this method is very good and one of the best way of making sure that it looks great and lasts. And because I'm adding oils, I'm just careful to cover over the decor once it's fully dry with a thin coat of gloss varnish as well. As it's such a small area, I didn't get my airbrush out for this while waiting for the gloss varnish to fully dry before I can start the oils I decided to get the base texture down I'm using AK desert sand here I'm not going full desert with this you'll see a little bit more later I'm going to add some pigments to it but I really like this stuff and because it takes a little while to dry it seemed like a good opportunity to get it down now and also if you are not doing the gloss and oil stages this would logically be the next step for you this is Soilworks Oil Wash. It's from Scale Color, which is Scale 75, and it's grease. You'll see here, I'm just adding some panel lining, some pin washes, whatever you like to call it. And that nice glossed shiny surface really helps it run into the recesses. You can see it just flowing around. I know a lot of people now are using the, the AK enamel panel lines and washes, and I need to pick up some of those. And they're using them without doing a gloss coat first and you absolutely can if you are careful but they do obviously have thinners in and thinners will eat away at your paints so you have to be a little bit careful um, but another reason I, I, I gloss my miniature first here is to apply the decals and the third one is I can be a little bit lazy with this this panel lining with this with these recessed washes you can slop it on a little bit you can almost cover whole surface areas and wipe it off afterwards whereas if you're not using a gloss varnish you have to be a lot more careful about how you clean it off um, this is why I do it now if you're careful enough and you only want to add a little bit here and there for the other little shade then great if you like me you like some of your your fantasy sort of grim dark miniatures looking very grim dark um, then the gloss varnish may well be a method that suits you but essentially what I'm aiming for here is is twofold it's applying a shade into the recess areas but also something that will make it look dusty and weathered and and worn um, and because of the way these oil washes dry they have a slightly kind of dusty effect to them so not only do you get that shadow but you also get an effect that makes the armor look a little bit more realistic now a 50-50 mix of contrast, skeleton, horde and medium just to create a little bit of a wash to go over the texture on that base. Again, I'm doing this now because I'm waiting for those oil washes to dry a little bit ready for the next stage. You could easily use a sepia wash if you had one. Now this is Artist White Spirit and it is perfect for my next task which is tidying up the oil washes. Now I've got some cotton buds there if I want to use them. I don't end up using them on this miniature. I'm using a, a clean brush, I've got a little bit of clean white spirits in the pot lid there and I've got a paper towel just to dry the excess off. And because oil washes take days and days and days to fully cure, you can go back and clean away any areas you don't want the oil wash on and remove tide marks. You can see me doing that here on the top of the Terminator. So I'm just removing those tide marks, leaving it in those recesses. And this is the joys of that kind of 
glossing it first and been able to do this knowing that the paint is completely safe and I, if I've gone over and I missed a, a missed a line or something like that um, it's, uh, it's still going to be cleaned up without hurting or damaging the miniature it's actually quicker even though it's two stages rather than one by not having to be quite so deliberate with the first stage um, I can really save time on this and it, either way it's definitely a lot quicker than, than trying to panel line with something like an Agarax Earthshade where, which dries extremely quickly especially in the summer months and it means you often have to go back and, and paint another layer on afterwards whereas this I've got my yellow damp and sorted and I can go back and, and, and shade it and clean it off afterwards. So I have to methodically work my way around the miniature really thinking about where I don't want it to pull and um, some of the recessed areas have, have become completely covered in the oil wash so I clean it away in the center knowing that the, the oils will still be settled in all the crevices and things exactly where you want them. Now the next stage is to get rid of all that shine with a matte varnish and this I suppose is the drawback for using all these glosses and things you are adding extra stages though I think the final effect is worth it. It's very important to make sure that your oils have cured enough leaving them overnight to dry if you can do. You definitely want to make sure you haven't got any wet white spirit on there from the cleanup stage. I'm trying to keep away from the metallic areas as much as I can because your matte varnish will really dull it down so sometimes it's worth doing these stages and going back and doing metallics afterwards i have used oil washes on the metallics so i'm just trying to be careful with here with the with the airbrush with the matte varnishing I'm using it quite thin most of this is either black or yellow stuff that i want the matte varnish to go on so it's only really around the storm bolter that i'm trying to avoid it at, at all costs now you'll see here that all that matte varnish is dry and it's all about adding those final touches now. So some game air silver here and going back and brightening up some of that edged weathering we did earlier on. It's been dulled slightly by the weathering process. I can go back and just pick it out where I really want it to look extra worn and you've got a variation between sort of dulled scratches and brighter scratches that may be newer. Then with some Rhinox hide and a little bit of torn sponge on the end of some tweezers, I'm just adding a little bit of chipping here. Then using the same method with some Game Air Silver, adding a few more brighter chips as well. Now it's time to highlight those wax seals and I'm using some Citadel Layer Evil Sun Scarlet for the first part of the red. And then some Wild Rider Red for the extra top highlight. Now to highlight the parchment scrolls themselves and I'm starting with some model colour dark sand. Just concentrating on those top areas where the light hits most. Then if you really want to you can go in with a little bit of off-white. This is also model colour just to add a further top highlight and make them pop a little. Now to brighten up those white Crux Terminatus areas and I'm using the white grey that we started with again with the oil washes and the shade that we made using the, the white express colour and medium. It just needs a little bit of tidying and brightening up so we're just picking out the, the top areas here and leaving the shadows as they are. And then just using some model colour off-white to further add a top highlight to those. And then to finish the bases, I'm brushing in some dry pigment. I won't seal this, I'm just going to brush it into the texture, blow the excess off. It will stay there absolutely fine if you seal it with any white spirit or anything like that, or, or pigment fixer. It does change the texture, go with the, the effect you like. But I'm using some burnt sienna here for an orange side of the base. And then the other half, I'm going to use some dark yellow ochre, kind of blending them together, which is super easy to do with dry pigment. And it gives you a little bit of interest on the base so it's desertish but it's more of a kind of uh, Saturn desert or a, a lunar desert kind of look rather than your your average um, earth desert when you're expecting something that maybe the tomb kings would, would be standing in 
Finishing off by tidying up the base rim, I'm using black, which I do for most of my armies. And there we are, all finished, and I'm pretty happy with this as a test piece. And I'm looking forward to painting the rest of the force, even if they do only sit in the cabinet most of the time. Have you been tempted back to Warhammer 40k via 10th edition or have you, like me, just liked the new miniatures really and wanted to have a go at painting some of them, whether they hit the table or not, I don't know. But let me know what you're doing. Are you working on any 40k armies at the moment? Are you working on any different things that uh, you don't normally do at the moment? Have you been tempted back into any old games? I'd be really interested to hear about it in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the techniques used? How do you paint your miniatures? Are any of you using these kind of methods to to, to paint your 40k miniatures or are you sticking to more of the, the traditional style that Games Workshop has sort of suggested over the years and taught over the years? Have any of you recently tried using oil washes and things and converted? I, I, I like to get an idea of, of what people think of these kind of techniques. By painting a lot of Horus Heresy armies, I got very used to using these techniques that maybe you would have seen in, in military modelling or, or modelling or World War II modelling or something like that for, for gaming rather than what you might traditionally see through the players of sort of Games Workshop's games. So I'm very interested in, in what kind of techniques people used. Has this been useful? But anyway, if you are new to the channel, please do go and check out the other content there. Consider subscribing if you like what you see leave some requests for things that you'd like to see painted. I may well get around to it and it gives me an idea of, of what people are looking for. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider giving it a like. It really does help the channel get seen by other people. Let me know that you've enjoyed the video. But thank you very much for watching. Take care and I will catch you soon.